I'm just going to be going over the modifications that I made to the 3x21 seam, uh, just so other people can replicate it. Uh, yep, because this light underperforms uh, quite uh, a lot, uh, just in the from the factory without any modifications done to it. Uh, and there is a uh, possible possibility of burning out or uh, desoldering the emitters because of how hot they run without the with it, without one of the modifications. So it's it's kind of something you have to do if you want to buy this light. I've reported it to uh, Simon, who's like the head of Convoy, and uh, yes, I, I don't know whether he's going to start uh, uh, making these alterations to the lights or whether you're you're just going to have to continue doing it yourselves. Uh, so the first one was, yeah, it's pretty pretty frustrating with the slide. I had finished all the testing, all the measuring, graphs, everything, and then I ran the LHP uh, 531 on turbo, full turbo, uh, for 45 to 50 seconds to measure the range, and I just all of a sudden felt the 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 flashlight jolt like a big jolt and it gave me a big fright thinking that the batteries were unstable or something and they were going to explode uh, i really got a bit of a scare from it but the, what happened was these springs all of a sudden just collapsed they overheated and they just uh, compressed uh, and so yeah convoy um, is just using single springs uh, and with a light that's drawing over 100 amps, a single spring is just nowhere near enough. Uh, and so it's just like the overheating, too much resistance. And so I've gone ahead and installed a spring wire bypass. And so that allows a lot more current to be able to flow. So you just get a small bit of wire that's about 20 to or 18 to 20 gauge wire. And you just solder it to the, the base and the top of each spring. Uh, if you've got very little soldering skill and you don't really know how to do this or want to do this, and then another thing you can do is just loosen off the retaining rings around each spring uh, and then get a second smaller uh, spring and insert it inside them. And then tighten back down the retaining rings and it's as simple as that. I'll put a link in the description for the correct springs from the Convoy store. Uh, but that's, that's a very easy uh, change to make. So by carrying out this modification in the LHP531 uh, emitter option, I uh, saw an increase from 24,000 lumens up to 29,000 lumens. Uh, the SFT40 version just jumped about 1,000 lumens. Uh, but yeah, you're still getting a bit of an increase there. Uh, the uh, from there, uh, there's another modification, another issue that I found, uh, and that is the screws. So you've got on this this model, you've got uh, you've got uh, the the emitters are soldered onto the circuit board of the MCPCB. Uh, uh, and uh, there's no screws uh, applying pressure uh, onto the MCPCB against the shelf inside. And so for this design, those screws that are passing through inside here uh, are meant to pull the reflector down onto the MCPCB to apply that pressure. And those screws there, you see those white spaces there, those are mine, I 3D printed those. Uh, but this, the screws are two millimetres too long. And so there's no pressure being applied by that reflector down onto that, um, that MCPCB. Uh, and so those emitters aren't able to cool down properly. They're not able to transfer the heat into the rest of this flashlight to be able to get rid of the heat. Uh, and so that's so that's causing the uh, emitters to get too hot. Some people on Reddit uh, showed me photos of the emitters that had desoldered, them, desoldered themselves 
uh, and they would no longer work because uh, the emitters were just getting far, far too hot. And so by 3D printing that little spacer there, uh, those two in there, uh, it's all tightened up, uh, it pulls down onto the, the reflector pulls down and applies the pressure uh, and it tightens it all up. Uh, that's how it was intended to be, uh, but yeah, just because of the, the screw issue. Uh, so by doing that, it increased from 29,000 lumens up to the highest I've been able to achieve is 31,700 lumens. So you got a bit of an increase there. Uh, because the emitters were getting too hot and so they were reducing an output because of the heat uh, and so yeah, these are all very worthwhile modifications I just hope that Convoy does this uh, uh, from the factory so in the future so nobody has to do it but there's a lot of these units out there that uh, need these mods done uh, if you don't have a 3D printer you could use uh, little washers um, or just get some cutters out and cut the screws down one to two mil. Uh, and so yeah, it's uh, so the, yeah, these are just the just the little spaces here. So yeah, the so this this one here, you could have like a little uh, washer, but this one here that's against the switch. Uh, it is. Uh, you'd have to sort of cut the washer because uh, it's pressed the holes like right up against the side um, and so yeah there's not enough room for just a round washer to use so you'd have to sort you'd have to cut it but it's easy to just cut the screws down uh, and uh, so yeah so to do it yeah you just remove three screws from the back by unscrewing unscrewing that getting that out uh, and another uh, issue that you'll run into and it's on all of the 3x21 series uh, is that the the cell or battery slots are really sharp and they actually end up cutting into your wrappers uh, and so you can see you can see there it's actually cut uh, through the wrapper and I've got heat, I've got uh, six of these cells that I used uh, for my testing, and they've all got cuts on them. So I've I've had to sand down uh, the 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 cell slots or the battery slots. Uh, just yeah, just far too far too sharp. Uh, I've talked to Simon about it, and he said that he'll uh, improve that in the next batch. Uh, but yeah, it's just uh, another thing that I found, and I throw up a photo of it, is uh, just the soldering job on the uh, MCPCB inside. The wires were not soldered on properly. It looked like they used an iron, a soldering iron that was not hot enough. So the solder joints are not uh, very good. It's very well done, so I had to clean all them up. And there was like flux residue splashes all over it and all over the uh, emitters or LEDs and I had to clean it all off with isopropyl alcohol and so um, you know these are high quality uh, flashlights like they're pretty decent for the money that you're getting but the assembly process the care that's put in to the assembly is badly lacking uh, to find all these issues on just one model is you know it's pretty bad i would not recommend any sort of new person to flashlights uh to buy from convoy if you if you're confident in uh, disassembling a lights and checking it all over uh, then they are well worth the money but i would not uh i would not recommend it for those that don't want to start um do it going through that process uh but they you know you can just use the light and and convoy has got a very good warranty they're always going to back you if you have trouble but uh like i run a i run a flashlight store in new zealand and i disassemble all my convoy lights and build them back up 
and check them and make sure everything is just so for each customer so they don't run into any of these issues. Everything just works out of the box, no problems whatsoever. Uh, and so I just, yeah, I just, just a, I don't like having to, to see this kind of thing on the, on the convoy lights. Because uh, uh, Sofern and Workers are not that far off when it comes to price. Uh, and their out of box experience and their quality control is m just miles ahead. Uh, it's just way, way better. Uh, and so, yeah, I just, it's just a bit sad to see. Uh, it's sort of such a good brand, uh, sort of going downhill a bit since around uh, COVID. I've just been noticing more and more uh, very sort of poor assembly jobs on their lights. Uh, but yeah, so I hope that uh, helps you guys out and uh, yeah.